State, the home team for this game, as the Atlantic Coast Conference representative, comes in with a record of 13 wins and zero losses. Champions of the ACC, this is Florida State's 11th appearance in the Capitol on Orange Bowl, third most all-time. Georgia, the visiting team in this game, representing the Southeastern Conference, comes in with a record of 12 wins and one defeat, finishing first in the SEC East. The Bulldogs are making their fifth appearance here in the Capitol on Orange Bowl, and second in the last three years. We will first welcome Florida State head coach Mike Mortal to say a few opening remarks, and then we'll hear from Coach Kirby Smart. Coach Norton. Well, first off, I just want to uh, say thank you to the Orange Bowl and uh, you know, Orange Bowl Committee. You know, the hospitality this week has been incredible. It's been a great bowl experience for our players. You know, an opportunity to, to, to come to work, to, uh, to enjoy the time together, and you know, it's really been a special week, and just so grateful for everybody associated with the bowl and just uh, the way they've treated our student athletes, uh, our family, our friends. You know, it's, it's been, a, been a wonderful week. Uh, and this has been a special season. It's been one that, uh, you know, I'm proud of our team. I'm proud of the way that they have uh, worked throughout the course of the year, you know, the adversity that we faced, the way they've responded to it. Uh, you know, everything building up to, to finish you know, as an undefeated conference team champion uh, was something that was truly special for us. Uh, you know, coming into this bowl game, uh, you know, have, have a tremendous opportunity. Uh, some guys that will be getting you know, you know more work than what they what they've had throughout the course of the season, uh, but they get their opportunity, they get their shot. And to be able to do it against a, you know, a wonderful team in Georgia that's, uh, that's so very well coached, uh, you know, got great players, you know, very talented, and uh, you know, it's going to be a, a great challenge for our team. Uh, but I can tell you, we're excited about the opportunity, and you know, our guys have worked really hard. Uh, they've invested a lot, and uh, you know, it has been a, a special season for us on and off the field. And, and just so proud of our players and the way they, that they've represented, uh, you know, Florida State University, and uh, you know, all all of our players, past and present, by the way that they played and continue respond to all situations so uh, we're looking forward to, uh, to tomorrow and uh, the, the game that's at uh, the, the game that's ahead uh, but uh, you're definitely you know, proud of our guys for the work that they've invested thank you very much coach Dwell. now coach smart yeah i would reiterate what mike said every time i've ever come to the orange bowl i've been here multiple times the uh, orange bowl committee uh, the staff members the people that host the hospitality room the guys involved with players Eric Long, the CEO, they, they do a tremendous job of making sure it's first class. Everybody likes to come down here because of the weather, the beaches, and all the beautiful things you get. So I know the energy for our players has been very enthusiastic. Uh, they love the work, they love being down here. Uh, about 20 or 30 percent of our team was in the same location uh, two years ago. So when we got the practice facility, it was very comfortable. We knew where we were, we knew what we needed to do, and we got to work on that. I have a lot of respect for uh, Mike and his staff. We've recruited more and more against them uh, recently as uh, they returned to prominence and uh, having grown up where I grew up, 30 minutes from Tallahassee, I grew up uh, watching Florida State play, went to a lot of their games. So I have a lot of respect and I think it's great for college football when uh, Florida State is uh, always in the conversation. So his staff's done a tremendous job. They recruited our state, we recruited their state. Um, I have a lot of respect for them. Looking forward to an outstanding uh, game, an exciting game to go play uh, in Hartford. Thank you very much, Coach Smart. And now we'll open it up for questions now for both coaches. So we ask that again you please raise your hand, be acknowledged. A microphone will be brought to you by our staff. Please state your name, affiliation, which coach you would like to answer your question. And we'll begin our questions right now. We have a question already. Tom D'Angelo, Palm Beach Post, for both coaches. Um, what is the solution to what's happening in college football, especially in the month of December? Uh, the way the schedule is, you guys have so many things on your plate to you know, off different directions with transfer portal, with recruiting high school, with bowl game preparations. Uh, what, can each, each one of you just, you know, what, what do you think the solution is to all of this? Uh, you know, I mean, I'll, I'll just jump off. I mean, I think it, it is a challenging time, you know, in, in the month of December. And, uh, you know, I think NCAA is, is taking some positive you know, strides in, in a sense of uh, you're creating the dead week there after the final regular season game, uh, but uh, you, it, 
it's great for the teams that are not playing in a championship game, but when you do play in a championship game, it just kind of uh, it pours gasoline onto uh, all the issues of, of what you have to, to do and uh, you know the experiences for one the student athlete, but also the coaching staff. Uh, you know, for us, uh, I'm sure it's very very similar for, for Coach Martin, our staff. You know, we went into Sunday after the championship game and you know still seeing where you're going to play and what what that's going to look like. Um, you know, you have, the, you have a short meeting with the players, and we were on the road recruiting. And you know, you know that night, you know, being at multiple home, home visits, it, it really, you know, they, they didn't get a chance to sit down and really spend, you know, that that, that much time with our players once that was done, because you're, you're into the next part of what the calendar offers. Uh, you get into bowl season, transfer portal, all those, all those things. Uh, you know, it's, it's hard for the players. It's challenging for the coaches. Um, you know, I, I think when you look at the, at the time of the signing date. Uh, you know, it really, uh, you know, it's a, it, it forces a lot of decisions, you know, you know at, at a rapid pace. But, uh, you know, I think as we continue to evaluate and look at it, you know, we got to be careful on, on all changes. We're quick to make changes, and uh, sometimes I don't wish, you know, even though the coaches a lot of times will talk about the ripple effect of what will happen, um, you know, I think we really got to continue to evaluate that. And before we make these, you know, grand changes that they'll be aware of, aware of the, uh, the ripple effects of the calendar and really how it affects the student athlete, as well as, you know, just uh, you know, uh, the benefit of, of programs and coaches and, and, you know, efficiently and effectively being able to do the job to the best of our ability. Yeah, I don't know that I have a perfect solution. I think anybody does. Um, but there, there's, there's issues and problems. And I think the call out of this is going to be a five, ten year study when you look back and, you know, kids are going to be graduating at less than a rate. Maybe that's not important. We've got to decide if we're student athletes or not. Because uh, what we're seeing is decisions are being made less on student athletes and on where they need to go and financial reasons with NIL and more things together. So there's a lot less decisions being made based on where school starts. And you can push all this movement till January. But everybody's school starts at a different time. Does it matter? Did, did the school starts at a different time? I don't think any of the kids make the decision based on that. So when the school starts in January, um, guys got to decide where they're going. Um, signing the high school kids earlier and then going to the portal, portal after signing high school kids would certainly create a little less confusion instead of both going on simultaneous. You don't know what you have going in or out, and it's all happening at once. So it's, not only anybody has a perfect solution, but uh, certainly we're headed towards some tough times and it continues to Okay, to our right, Kirby Zach Line, Channel 2 in Atlanta. Uh, two part question. Do you have a game status update for Brock? And then way down the road, when your grandkids ask you, what was it like, if this is his last game, what was it like coaching his legacy at the University of Georgia? Yeah, his legacy is he's a tremendous athlete, great toughness. Um, never seen a kid come back from a significant injury like that that fast. Uh, pretty remarkable the, the numbers he hit, what he was able to do. Um, as he came back, and he kind of changed the culture of the work ethic around, especially on our offense, um, to see him go out there and compete and work like he did for the three years he has has been pretty remarkable. I mean, he, he is uh, a machine when it comes to practice. Doesn't get tired, works his tail off, and uh, he's set a standard that will be there for a long time. I mean, he's affected Oscar Bell, he affected Darnell, uh, he's affected the young tight ends, um, he's affected everybody on the offense in terms of how he practices. We'll see. To the left. Irish Show, Warchant.com. Kirby, uh, it's been a few years, but can you reflect on your time at Florida State, what you learned from Coach Andrews and Coach Bowden, and maybe how that helped you in your career? Yeah, I, I was a uh, defense coordinator at Alaska State and uh, decided to be a graduate assistant, which people would say was a step down, but to be in a room with uh, Mickey Andrews, Odell Hayes, Joe Cowns, Cody Allen, uh, Kevin Steele, a lot of really good minds in college football. It helped shape me. Um, been sitting in the staff room with Coach Bow for two years, uh, getting to see how he ran the team and how he commanded the respect of the team. Uh, was really intra instrumental in, in my upbringing as a coach. Two of the best years I had, I got a graduate degree from FSU, was able to be you know, 45 minutes from my hometown, and uh, just a tremendous experience. Question in the rear on the right. Or in the middle. On the right. On the front. On the right. Jordan L. Dogs 24-7. Kirby, just how is Stacy doing and who's sort of stepped up while he's been absent? 
Yeah, uh, Stacy was a little sick before the Christmas break, and we talked on the break, and we had four days, three or four days off, and we thought we'd bounce back. Uh, and then when we got ready to come back to work on the 25th, he was still um, struggling. So Ron had to check in, um, feel like he's doing really well, he's moving around, possibly down in Athens. Don't think he's going to make it down uh, uh, for the game. Uh, they don't want him to be right now, but he is up and moving and recovering. His wife Trish said he's going to his hell, so she's having a beer with him. Um, but he's got a wonderful wife and two daughters, and um, I know he'll bounce back. So it is at his uh, absence man rate. Put Man Ray on the same bar on the field, and uh, he's done a tremendous job. He's been an office and line coach uh, several places. He was over at Alabama for a while. He's a kid from North Gwinnett. He grew up in a, a great football kind of system, so he's jumped right in and done a great job. On the right. Uh, Will McBroom, WBFS Tallahassee. Coach Norvell, uh, obviously a lot of veteran players are not going to be playing in this game. Um, how is that, though? Uh, translated into the younger players who are getting their first shot in some cases at major action. What has their attitude been towards having that opportunity for this game? I mean, they're excited, and uh, you know, there's been a there's been a great buzz around the about the program uh, because you know you, you work for opportunity, and that's what that's what the greatest thing about football is that you never know when that moment's going to show up. You know, you never know when your number's going to be called, but you got to be prepared for it. And so you know, there's been there's guys that are on this uh, on this team that make make major contributions in this game. They've been preparing for this for, for their entire life. And now for, for the, the, the chance to go showcase who you are, to be able to do it in the Calvin One Orange Bowl against Georgia, who's, who's been really the standard of college football in the last you know, you know, three years. I mean, it, it, that's been the elite level. This is their chance. And you know, every player always wants more. Well, you know, you work, you build. Sometimes that might not be the, the instant gratification that you want, but you, you push yourself uh, to put yourself in a position when, when that time comes that you are ready. And, and I really just uh, appreciate the way that our guys have worked. I think we, we try to do a great job throughout the course of the season to continue to help the development of some of our younger players. So those guys might not be on that, that front line uh, you know, throughout the, the course of the year and you know, to prepare you for times like this. And you know, we face adversity throughout the season and the guys had to rise up and the you know, guys had to be inserted into, you know, throughout our journey of, of, of you know, working with a conference championship. And, and they, they were ready. Uh, and I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to seeing them play here tomorrow. Thank you, Earl, on the left. Matt Marshall in Orlando Sentinel. Mike, uh, how, what have you seen out of Rock, and what are your expectations going into tomorrow and, and for, you know, having him having the last couple weeks of, of going to camp and everything? You know, Rock, I mean, he's, a, he's a remarkable young man, and uh, you know, he's, he's matured beyond his, his age. I mean, the way that he approaches uh, practice, the way he approaches the media room, you know, his excitement, and really just the, uh, the charisma he brings you know, to the guys that are around him. You know, being his first start, being an ACC conference championship, uh, you know, there was a lot on it. And, it's, and really, you know, this is his first week going into a game week, knowing that he was going to be the starter because you know, there was some uncertainty there, you know, even in the championship week, and you know, how practice reps you know, kind of went. So, uh, you know, I, I, love, I love his attitude, I love his approach. I think he's very talented. Uh, you know, he's got, the, you know, he's got you know, the, you know, all the, the characteristics you, you look for in what you want a quarterback to be. And, uh, you know, he learned some lessons in that first game. And now it's, now it's you know, an opportunity to go and, and improve and, and, you know, help those guys around and, and you know, to go play at, at, at the highest level that we possibly can. And, you know, he's got a, a great deal of energy and excitement for tomorrow. And like I told him, you know, we just need to go out there and be himself. And if he does that, continue to improve, continue to get better, learn from the experiences that he's had, I've got a great confidence in how we'll play. Next to last for the right. David Hill with ESPN. Uh, Mike, I, you, you talk so much to your players about controlling what you can control and not letting the other stuff affect them. Uh, this past month has been a lot of things that are out of your control, starting with the committee's decision, certainly the opt-outs and portal stuff, up to the lawsuit being filed last week. Has this tested your uh, resolve on that premise more than maybe any other time in your career? I mean, I, I think so. I mean, I think so. I mean, when you sit there and you look at uh, you know, the challenges that present themselves, I mean, we are in a, we, we're in a wonderful place with a wonderful position. I mean, there's nothing to, to sit back and, and hold your head, you know, or hang your head about. I mean, this team, you know, they went through an incredible season. And from where we were four years ago to where we are now, I mean, you've seen tremendous growth. Uh, 
a tremendous belief. It was a wonderful culture and, and team that we get to be a part of. Uh, but the challenges have presented themselves. And, uh, you know, for us, it's, uh, you know, we always talk about that response. We talk about, you know, the, the, the mindset of which you're going to bring uh, to, to things that you can't control. And, you know, ultimately, you know, it, it still provides opportunity, which provides choice. And, you know, that's where you know, they continue to, to hit with our guys and continue to hammer, you know, hammer through uh, this journey is that, you know, whether you're a first year or whether you're in your last year, you know, this is this could be a defining moment moment for you, Ben. So go make the most of it, you know, give it everything that you have and try to block out all the outside noise and to just continue to, to focus on your improvement and just being better than what you've been. And you know, there's there, there's been some tough choices for guys to have to make. Uh, you know, I support our players in, in uh, you know in their journey. And you know, there's been, you know, it was a it was hard, it was a, bit, a lot of more hurt, you know, and, and decisions and things that they couldn't control. But, you know, ultimately, you know, I, I believe in where, you know, we're going to continue to, to build to, you know, through the experiences, right? And then, you know, obviously, just grateful for all that our, our players have poured in to our program throughout this journey. First row on 11. Yeah, Mike Griffith from Dog Nation. Kirby, before this year, I don't think a number one team had ever dropped out of the top four on a final weekend. and. There's obviously been a trend with a lot of players opting out, skipping the bowl game, and that opportunity to play with their teammates one final time. I don't think George has had any opt outs. Can you talk about the decisions that the guys made to play with one another and what went into building that culture? Well, I think uh, leaders of the team kind of spearheaded that. I, I stay out of that with each um, player who's draft eligible, seniors that are, you know, have uh, draft grades. And, Spoke to them very honest and uh, talked to them. Then they had to make a decision with their family members. And uh, they, they, they want to go out on top. They, they don't want their last Georgia outing to be uh, what was the SEC championship. So they put their minds to boot. And it was a little bit of a uh, uh, almost contagious. You know, one guy did it, another guy did it. They wanted to play. So um, certainly very proud of that. But I, I do think we're going to have guys that want opportunities.
and you never know, you know what opportunity might present itself and then how we can showcase all the skills and talents that these guys have. And I think Jakai is a wonderful example of that. Mr. Tim Reynolds. Appreciate that. Tim Reynolds with the AP. Mike, how difficult, well, two, kind of a question in two parts. Is there still anger, or is it more of acceptance now that to follow, you, you, like everyone said, you can control what you can control about the committee's decision, and kind of to that end, how, how difficult is it, will it be, and has it been for you to accept that you're just never gonna know what might have been, what might have been if Jordan hadn't gotten hurt, what might have been if, if the committee had given you a shot, just how, how difficult is all that to accept? No, it is, it, those are all things outside of our control, but uh, you know, there will always be feelings about that, and I'll, I'll never get, say that, that that's, not, that's not real, because so I'm gonna always have feelings about that, that decision, and, you know, the things that uh, you know, I've had, had to you know, see the effect to our players, and you know, there's, there's guys that are not playing in this game, you know, that played their last game of Sports State Seminoles, um, and they gave everything that they had, you know, you in it, and there's, you know, I think that you know, some of the hurt that they experienced, that we experienced, just from not getting the opportunity to go and um, you know, to show that what we believed, you know, we had an opportunity to achieve. But uh, this has been a team of, of great resolve. This has been a, a team that has overcome adversity. Um, you know, I think you know, when you sit there and look, there are not a whole, a whole lot of people you know, would have predict, you know, predicted or expected you know, for us to go undefeated this year. You know, we lose Jordan and you have to play you know, our, one of our biggest rivals, you know, to go and, and have our backup quarterback go down and go, uh, you know, have to win a conference championship. And the way that that was done, it was just from the response. And I think it shows the heart, shows the character, uh, you know, of our team and, and, you know, what we've built within this program. And, you know, we're still, we're still at the beginning of where we're going. And you know, a great days ahead here in front of the, in front of this program. And, you know, but it still doesn't get it back for the guys that are playing in their, that they played in their last year here at Florida State, and uh, you know, that's 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 what hurts. And uh, you know, ultimately, um, you know, we're excited for opportunity, and you know, it, it does have to go back to control the things you control. There's there's plenty of times in life, and you know, I've told this to our team and to each of the players. There's going to be times in life where things don't go, you know the right way or the way that you expect them to go, or maybe even what you earn. You, you don't always receive, you know, you know the, uh, uh, the reward for that, but you know, you do control the response. And what you do with it, where you go, and uh, you know, the attitude that you bring, I mean, that's, that's what's going to define the identity of what you have. So uh, I know we're going to go out tomorrow, we're going to fight with everything that we have to go put our best on that field. And, uh, you know, I'm excited we get to do it against a great opponent and a great, you know, great staff that we get to compete against. And, uh, you know, this is something that is going to continue to help push our program to, to ultimately where we're going to, where we're going to end up. And we're here. Uh, questions for Coach Smart, uh, Allison Posey, WCTV in Tallahassee. I want to go back to your time at Valdosta State. Just maybe favorite memory of being a Blazer, but also how did your time in South Georgia, growing up in Bay Ridge, coaching at Valdosta State, shape you into who you are today? My favorite memory of Valdosta State would be beating Central Park. I knew you'd bring that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think you had to be there for a town. A lot of points. 31 to 7, first half. <laughs> good good halftime adjustment, sir. Did you play it? Yes. Yeah. Great. Third one, he said, I can't believe we came back and won this game. Um, that was 2001, maybe, or 2000. I don't know when it was. But, um, I had a great time about Austin State. It was a, a pleasure to work there. Um, a lot of great staff members, great little coaches. A lot of good coaches come out about Austin State. Uh, it was not fun riding the bus to Arkadelphia uh, 18 hours um, and then driving home. You got home Sunday, you had to go straight into work. It was, by the time you got home, you had to start the next game. But uh, I learned a lot of football, learned a lot about coaching. Um, I enjoyed my time there, and that, that impact was uh, probably cut my teeth recruiting because I knew the back channels and the roads down through South Georgia, and I'd grown up there. And a lot of respect for my dad as a high school coach, so I, I got welcomed into a lot of schools, and we signed a lot of good players at Dallas State from South Georgia. On the right side. Good morning, DJ Jones from Sports Vision. This question is for both coaches. We know that this time of year is, is very integral to sports, getting the younger players more time to practice and develop. I'd like to hear your coach's philosophy or how you, how you go about that. Yeah, we, we, we try to get uh, as many reps as we can for our young players. We've been fortunate to have, I don't know how many years you're in there, 14, 15 guys that have come in, not to mention the ones who didn't play this year, we're already on the team. So uh, if we have enough people, we try to get ones, twos, and threes 
reps uh, throughout this time. There's times we can't get all threes in there because we're down a little bit. <coughs> our other numbers and our health. Uh, but I love watching those guys play. And we try to balance out the reps because we feel like our, our ones have had a lot of reps throughout the year. So we'll do a lot more periods with more balance to get those guys almost an extra spring practice. And I think it's had a great impact on our program for the last three years to get these extra practices, even the extra game, you know, after this one, the last two years to kind of get those guys uh, more prepared for next season. Yeah, we, uh, very similar, we try to take the, the first five practices, uh, you know, the weekends after the championship week, uh, you're during recruiting, uh, you know, we were practicing on those weekends and really kind of doing like developmental practices, uh, you know, a lot of the, you know, our, our older guys have played a lot, you know, they, they got the individual work, they always speed on the uh, but really the focus was on uh, those guys that didn't get as many reps throughout the, throughout the year and to, uh, to help you know, continue to build the, fu the fundamentals, the focus, you know, we continue to build upon the concepts of what, what we do um, and I thought it was, uh, was really beneficial and uh, you know as decisions were made uh, you throughout whole season I mean I think those practices were huge for us uh, with some of the guys that are now you know, that were in those developmental practices that are now going to get an opportunity to get back in this game and you know it, it goes back to that that statement, you never know. You know when your numbers are going to be called, you have to be ready for it. So make sure that the work through the process is preparing you for ultimately what you want to be and, and uh, you know, being ready when, that, when your number is called. Last row on the right. Brandon Adams from Dog Nation. This question is for Kirby. You know, George is a program that has a lot of rivals. Florida State has historically not really been one of those. The two teams just haven't played very much. But a lot of recruiting battles throughout the years. Being from Bainbridge, you kind of know the way fan base sort of intermingled down there, that both sides. With the expanded playoff coming up, the chance for more meetings in the future, could you see this Georgia-Florida State rivalry perhaps grow a little bit, kind of reflecting what kind of typically goes on between the two programs, recruiting maybe more battles on the field coming up in future years? Yeah, that, that, that's already happened. I mean, uh, we, we, we go, they go into South Georgia more than they probably used to, and um, that's an area that we take a lot of pride in. So we do bump heads down there, all throughout Jacksonville, Tallahassee, we got kids playing from Tallahassee and South Florida, and they got kids playing from Atlanta. So uh, that's definitely the case, and probably will um, uh, continue to happen, especially with the, the playoff format and we'll kick in next year. Second row on the left. Mark Wise, our Athens fan, right here. Uh, Kirby, I want to ask you about Malachi Starks, a two year starter, late made a bunch of All American teams. Where do you see his game as he begins his third season after this bowl in terms of areas where he can improve and get better? Uh, I think bigger, stronger um, in the weight room. Uh, he's dealt with some shoulder injuries and some things. Uh, it's going to be really important for him uh, to maintain his weight and stay up. He's a really good athlete. He's uh, got the ability to play man to man. He could probably go play corner if we asked him to. Uh, he's, a, he's a track kid in high school and had good track numbers, uh, great ball skills, um, but he also uh, has size. So we want him to maintain that 200 pounds and continue to fill uh, weak side B. I mean, he does a great job of that. He's Second row, on the road. Hey, Mike, Zach Klein again from Channel 2 in Atlanta. When the dust settles, and if Florida State is the only undefeated team remaining, should you and Florida State consider themselves national champions? You know, I mean, I think that as things go on the field, you've got to control what you can control on the field. Uh, you know, we were not presented the opportunity to, to go play in the college football playoff. Uh, you know, for, for that decision, I mean, we get a chance to go compete. Georgia to try to win the Orange Bowl. And uh, you know, that would be an incredible feat uh, for our football team to be able to go 14-0 you know, uh, throughout the course of the season, throughout the things that we've had to face. I mean, it's uh, you know, right now that's the focus. And uh, ultimately that's, that's what's in front of us. And you know, that's, that's all we've talked about. Connor Riley, Dog Nation, is for Kirby. Uh, is there a status update on Marius Mims and David Wilson? Yeah, David had a scope of done. Yeah. Okay. 
back up, but then nobody's really going to listen. And what, what I've been pleased with is, you know, just the way the guys have approached the work that they that they've had, and now that they are getting more of an opportunity, uh, you know, to see them work to encourage, to push. Uh, you know, when you sit there and look at a lot of guys on our offensive line, I mean, guys that, that do have the experience and you know, you know obviously are, are veterans within what we're what we're doing. I think they've done a great job with it. Uh, you know, so you know, some of those skilled players you mentioned, Jakai, you know, a couple guys that. Uh, you know, really pushing to elevate you know, themselves to be supportive of some of the guys that maybe don't have as much. But uh, you know, I think I think the leadership has has come through the work, and you know, I think that's something that you know our guys all respect within each other. You know, Cheyenne Brown there in the defensive backfield, I think has really done a, a nice job of um, you know, trying to to, to you know, elevate himself. And Caleb Loach is one of our, our great players. I mean, he's uh, he's done a wonderful job. He has throughout this whole season as, as he's playing his last game as, as a Seminole, and then you know, a couple of those those guys on the defensive front have really been an impact. First throw on the right. Very Coach Smart, Sudo Badea, Fox 5, Atlanta. Um, talking to Coach Harley, he mentioned Carson has been just making next level throws. It's a different type of bowl prep for him. And when we spoke to him, he talked about how he, he's not really interested in the activities going on this week. He wants to watch film, wants to go to practice. What have you seen from him since he announced his return and really in bowl prep? Uh, well, I would say the more pressure moves it off of him um, instead of carrying that burden of that decision. He wanted to get that over and focus on the uh, Orange Bowl. He didn't want to have to you know, answer questions about that down here. He wanted to be his best. He wanted to lead his team. And, you know, I thought that was a good decision uh, in terms of his leadership. He's one of our, uh, our better leaders. He does it in a different way than most people. He's very poised and calm. Uh, very pleased with his leadership. In the room. As on the JermaineWarchant.com, question for Coach Norvell. Um, Coach, your players have been very honest about the pain they'll carry with them, their careers, the rest of their lives, about not being able to be rewarded for that resume that you guys put together. Is there a, is there a plan in place to make sure that doesn't linger in a negative way for you in this program? Because they said they're going to carry with them for a long time. Yeah, go play the game. Go, go fill me in the best you can possibly be in all things that are ahead of you. Um, you know, there's a lot of experiences that you're going to learn from in life. And what you do with those experiences are going to dictate what your future is going to be. Uh, we had an opportunity to play Georgia in the Orange Bowl, and this is a, it's an exciting game. It's a great opportunity uh, as we go through and get into the offseason, and we get to continue to elevate this program uh, to, to where it deserves to be. And you know, going going undefeated you know, uh, up to this point, I mean, it's been it's been a wonderful uh, you know, ride for our for our program, but you know, we still haven't accomplished you know all that's in front of us. And, you know, it's about the work, it's about the, you know, the response, it's about the, the way that our guys will continue to improve. A lot of our guys are taking that step to the, to the National Football League, uh, you know, here in the near future. And, you know, the, will they still you know, have the pain and the hurt from uh, you know, maybe choices that were made? Absolutely. But, uh, you know, they can, they can still focus on what to be the best they can be and, uh, you know, they, they, will, they will find situations in the future. You know, this experience will help them, you know, manage through and to, to help them throughout the course of their lives if they, if they take advantage of it. Second row on the right. Will McGroom, WVFS Tallahassee. Coach Smart, I uh, wanted to ask about uh, a couple of guys who had dealt with injuries for a lot of the year and uh, in Lab McConkey and Kendall Milton and, you know, could have sat out this game but pretty much immediately decided that they were going to play for sure. What has their leadership meant? Not only in the lead up to this game, but this season as a whole. Yeah, both those guys have been uh, the stalwarts. I mean, they, they, it's not just this year. They led last year, the year before that. Kendall and uh, Lad are two of the most loyal Bulldogs that we'll ever have. Um, they, they play on special teams. Uh, they, they, they create toughness in the way they practice. Uh, they both have been through some injuries, um, and they both have some back to and they, they never hesitated. I mean, Kendall. Played his best football at the end of the year and really came home and had some, some really good games and he wants to go out on top. So it was important to him to come out and play this game. And Lad has been out of injuries all year and hasn't been over to practice much, uh, but he, he gives us what he's got. And uh, we know that we're getting the game day healthy and he's a, he's a really good player. Fourth one on the left. Jordan Silversmith, Tomahawk Nation. Coach Norvell, can you talk about how Dylan Jackson has looked in practice? And how excited he is for this game? You know, Daryl's been great. Uh, you know, this is that's a great example of somebody that uh, you know, unfortunately at the end of the year uh, was 
was uh, was denied an opportunity uh, to play this season uh, due to, to the to the two time transfer, which now apparently has changed. So uh, you know, it's it, it's a great example of control things you can control. And Daryl's brought a smile to his face throughout the course of the season. He's worked his butt off uh, to, to, to be in position. You know, we knew once we got to the postseason, uh, he's, he would be eligible to play, and you know, that's been our focus. And you know, I've challenged him you know, throughout the year. And, you know, he's he is you know absolutely, he's done everything in his power, and so you know, he's he's excited about it. You know, he's got plenty of game experience under his belt. Um, but you know, there's going to be some some nerves, like some. Uh, you know, some uh, you know, emotion and probably some anxiety, you know, going into this one and, uh, you know, just getting out there and go go and play the, the, the next time. And, uh, but I'm definitely excited about seeing him uh, get in there and make, make an impact uh, on this game. Question on board. Here comes the mic. Hey, Mike, I, I know in the ACC championship game, that was sort of a whirlwind for Brock and, uh, Talking to Alex, it sounded like the game plan was like, don't make the big mistake that could cost us the game. Um, sort of a two-part question here. One, knowing if you knew then what you know now about how the committee was judging you, would you have approached that differently and tried for some style points? And, and two, given that you've had more time with him in this role, do you expect a, a, more of the offense to be on his shoulders in this one? Win a conference championship game by 10 points. I think that's pretty stylish. So, uh, you know, I don't, you know, ultimately, that was the, it was about winning the game. And, you know, I thought our defense had a great plan, did a, did a wonderful job. You know, we knew we couldn't make the, the big mistake, we couldn't get the extra possessions. And, uh, you know, I thought you know, Brock did a good job of managing, you know, that uh, throughout the course of the game. And, uh, you know, but you know, that was his first start. You know, it was his first, you know, meeting, meaningful you know, reps throughout a, uh, throughout a game, you know, in, in that type of situation. So, you know, he will be better from that. And you know, as we jump into this one, this is his first week that he's come into a game week knowing that he's, he's the starter. And you know, we're able to, to plan things you know, accordingly to certain strengths that he has and you know, get, get enough repetitions of uh, the things that we expect to see and then also some things that might be unexpected that we see. And so um, and that's, that's the fun of this, uh, of this week for us. And you know, I'm, I'm definitely, uh, you know, like I said, Brock said, uh, he's got great, great confidence, great belief, great emotion. Uh, and what he brings and how he works, and just the, you know, the, the people that are around us, what have they they've been. Um, so you know, we're definitely looking forward to seeing him compete. And, and Kirby, if I could follow up on that, um, how much do you prepare for the unexpected in a situation like this? Versus, you know, you've got 13 games of tape on FSU that may or may not be particularly relevant to what you're doing right now. Yeah, uh, it's hard to prepare for the unexpected. That's what I've learned in coaching. I mean, just, you can't really prepare for it better off spending your time blocking and tackling and getting better at the fundamentals. And that's what we try to do and uh, adjust to what we get and um, try to prepare for what we've seen and, and, and use all the tape we can to, you know, have different options, different looks. Uh, try to, you know, it's a lot of time between these the games. Our, our last game, our last game, same day, and then you go all the way forward. There's a lot of things that can change and go on with kids' heads. So for us, it's been about fundamentals trying to be better at blocking and tackling. That's what you see in all games. People, people don't tackle well, people don't block well. First throw on the left. Yeah, Brooks also McDowell stated the questions for both coaches. It seems both of you guys have uh, players that are in the portal but are participating in this football game. I'm curious how you go about coaching a player who on the surface appears to have a foot in and out. We, we don't really have any better than a kicker. Uh, 
try to find maybe better situations you know, for them. And uh, they've done everything that we've asked them to do throughout this, throughout this journey that they've been on. And so um, you know, some of them might return to Florida State, some of them might not. And, uh, but you know, they have an opportunity to go and compete and you know, be with this team uh, to finish out what they started. I'm, I'm grateful for it. Here's the first of our last two questions. Last word on the road. Brandon Adams from Dog Nation, this is Kirby again. How much momentum into an off season could a bowl win provide? Well, back in the day of recruiting in January, it was much more. You know, your signing class is done. Uh, everything's almost through. School starts uh, next week from January uh, 6th or 7th for us. So it's like it, it, it can provide momentum in terms of going out and recruit the junior class. It can provide momentum in going out to the portal class, but it's probably not as much as it used to be when people sign in February. The earlier sign day provides momentum coming out of your championship games, more so than the ball games. Our last question will come from